special guy here that needs a special introduction. I don't know if this will work, but one man in each century is given the power to control and change dentistry as we know it. <laughs> Last century it was G.D. Black. University of Northwestern and at the University of Iowa, but today you have before you the next paradigm shift. The real next level stuff. Let's give it up for D1 Patrick Rambert. Truly, I am humbled. <laughs> now, I'm what you call an expert. Pretty much the god of dentistry. And I'm going to take you guys on a little tour. We're going to go through dental history. How do we progress to where we are today? <laughs> you may be wondering, how am I a D1? That's a very good question. I want to go back to what I believe is the best dental school in the country. So I begin again as a D1. There we go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the ride. I have little catchphrases. So a little bit about me. If you haven't heard of me, this is your lucky day. I was born in Bloomingdale, Illinois. I'm the eldest of three children. And I'm a published researcher. I publish papers on cancer, dinosaurs. They're actually true. I love dental school. I really do. Here's my accomplishments. It's the sound of a gunner. I like to say, stay outside the bell curve. In karyology, I had this happen in such a magical way. I had the highest grade on the karyology midterm. Yeah. <laughs> so a little bit about the D1 class. We get along very well. We have an unhealthy love for each other. But the good thing is we're good students too. We study together. We have a Facebook group where we like to take notes, share study guides. So, it's a mistake. This would be a good time to share the eyes and the triplets in the audience. So, what is dentistry? It's maintaining and improving the overall oral health of patients through mechanical, chemical, and other useful modalities so that there are improvements to the well-being of the general population. <laughs> <laughs> so dentistry started way back in ancient Egyptian civilizations. It was founded by G. B. Black, an ancient Egyptian pharaoh. He noticed that workers with good oral health could make pyramids faster. <laughs> and that workers that drank from Lake Stephen, which is where, right by the Nile River, it decreased tooth decay. And he discovered that this lake had naturally high levels of fluoride. <laughs> so what he did is he connected the lake and the Nile River giving the entire population access to fluoridated water. Now, this was a huge deal back in the day. One of the best achievements of public health, and it was also a mechanical, just breakthrough. 
so tourists can still visit the Stephen Lee Museum. <laughs> talked about this a little bit. In 2000 BC, we see the first major improvement. Axiom was created. Now, I'm not going to read all of these, but we progressed through different materials. Published papers. 
I think they're great advances in public health. They're pretty decent journals, but the content is what really puts it apart. So let's begin with DMFT. Now what I did is I looked at the Iowa population, and over the course of two days, I looked at 40,000 people. <laughs> I wanted to know the background, the history, diet, everything. <laughs> and when I looked at the DMFT, there's a stat that really stood out. As people lose more teeth, their DMFT scores rise. <laughs> this is alarming. <laughs> this is the great dental crisis. <laughs> How do we stop it? I'm working on it. The dangers of amalgam. What is amalgam? That's a good question. It's 99% mercury, 1% silver. It's what we use to restore teeth. And it's not really effective. You ask any operative dentist, and they'll never use amalgam. Not once. But are amalgam fillings dangerous? Dr. Mercola thinks so. If you don't know him, Google him after this. He's interesting. And he's quoted me a lot, used my work, and said, Dr. Brown Bear, I need a conclusive piece of evidence that amalgam is dangerous. So I took the chalice, and I did some groundbreaking research with mice. So yes, it is dangerous. Now for my methods, I took 400 left and knockout mice. I fed them five mountain capsules. <laughs> now, don't worry, there's a control group. This is compared to mice that were fed five capsules of water, placebo. And I looked at overall health. And I came up with a startling figure in my nature paper. It's a classically used um, technique for dentists. It's the classic death versus time graph. <laughs> you can see after 10 hours, these mice just died. They couldn't take any more amalgam. <laughs> Some people may say this is not enough. I have proposed future studies as a human trial. <laughs> This is being reviewed by the Iowa Higher B. I have not heard back. Apparently, they should not be using this. Anyways, here's the future of dentistry in the U.S. based on my studies. DMFT scores will continue to rise for people losing teeth. And I think that Iowa College of Dentistry can really take the lead in combat. We will be a mountain free by 2016. <laughs> I'm serious though, like we will be a mountain free. <laughs> another talk for another day. <laughs> I will appreciate any votes, ladies and gentlemen. I will be running for 88 president, but I hope you've enjoyed this little tour here as I wrap things up. I have a couple of special thanks to um, people that helped with my research. Neil deGrasse Tyson, Bill Knight, the science guy, Richard Dawkins, Watson and Crick, Galileo. Um, and literally five minutes before I came onto this stage, um, I got a text from my aunt. And said, Pat, use this joke. What happened to the dentist that married the nail slash spa worker? <laughs> Thank you. You've been a great audience. And I hope you all.